I was paid a healthy bounty for Ringo and Curly Bill and realized there was real money to be made. That's why I went after Henry Plummer. Now wasn't he the sheriff who augmented his income by shaking down miners and robbing gold shipments? That's the one. Oh yeah, I remember him. He ran that gang of thieving outlaws called the Innocents. So it's true that you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him? Indeed I did, son. Indeed I did. I knew I needed resources if I was going to track down Roscoe Bob Bryant. And hunting plumber looked like a good way to get rich quick. As the local vigilantes exposed him as the leader of the bandits and put a generous price on his head. Plummer rallied his gang to plunder one last gold mine before making their escape. And that's where I thought I'd find him. Makes me nervous standing so close to all these goddamn barrels of gunpowder. Why would you be nervous? No one has the cojones to come after us. As long as you don't light up a cigar, we're fine. Yeah, besides, George is up there on the rocks with that rifle of his. Nothing gets past him. As my late father pointed out to me more than once, God made man. Samuel Cole oh. made him equal. See me do it again? I knew that dynamite wasn't mine, so I decided the polite thing would be to return it. Folks I knew from town, drawn by greed and easy pickings. Charlie Crow, the blacksmith. James, who worked in the stable. Put that moron <laughs> Sam and Jeremiah Barber, the butcher's cell. Ordinary citizens who lived a double life. Stealing and thieving. Murdering your neighbor.
was outnumbered and in way over my head. But I was too damn stubborn and stupid to realize it. They must have thought I was tough. Or had some kind of death wish. Seeing as there were barrels of gunpowder everywhere. One stray bullet, one stray spark, and I'd be blown to hell and gone. Did I have any second thoughts about what I was doing? No. You ain't beefing me. I finally made it past and headed on to meet my destiny. But first, I had something I needed to figure out. I had a few ideas on how to get into that mine, but once I made my decision, I knew there was no turning back. So my first thought was to enter the nearest mine portal. I saw an entrance. Made sense. It was the quickest way in, but that also made it more dangerous. As there would undoubtedly be enemy pickets posted along the way. Once you enter a mine like that, it's easy to get all turned around. And that confusing maze of corridors wouldn't even be the worst of it. Some of those shafts could be as deep as hell. A single stumble or misstep can easily end in a deadly plunge to oblivion. Reflexes often make up for a lack of common sense. 
Luckily, I was never one to be easily bushwhacked. I would just need to be careful not to blow myself to kingdom come. With all that gunpowder and dynamite everywhere, a body has to know what he's shooting at. Long bullet could have turned that mine into a dad blasted tomb. Good thing that I abandoned that ridiculous plan before I even tried it. Instead, I spotted a ladder, a way into the mine from the opposite side. It was a long way around, but that approach seemed more sensible at the time. Of course, being I had a problem with heights, that scaffolding scared the bejesus out of me. Climbing down that ladder required some caution. Because even though I had a younger man's reflexes, no man can dodge a damn bullet while climbing down a rickety ladder. I needed to make a leap of faith. Which ain't easy when you're suspended between heaven and hell. I was determined not to give up, however. That Sheriff Plummer seemed quite the despicable character. When the vigilantes discovered what the Sheriff was up to, people were outraged. That 10,000 they put on his head would go a long way to helping me find old Bob. made it my mission to settle that score come hell or high water. First, I would have to make a choice. Take the elevator, or climb the ladder.
plumber was a mad dog killer. <laughs> Nevada City? Well, I thought plumber met his maker in Bannock, Montana. Right, well, he was a sheriff of both places one time or another, but that's neither here nor there. What was taking him down would save a lot of lives, including my own. Plumber was clearly unhinged, and I could see right away that this was going to take some. Time. That's how Henry Plummer died. Him and his crew were worth their weight in gold. And now, I was officially a bounty hunter. So, did you finally go after that Bob feller? Well, I heard word he was in Kansas with John Wesley Hardin. So that's where I went. Where in Kansas? Abilene. Why do you ask, Ben? No reason. 
was Harden as fast as Ringo? Ringo was fast, but John Wesley was as fast as the devil himself. Hell, he killed his first man at 15. From that day forward, he had a price on his head and wouldn't back down for nobody, not even Wild Bill Hickok himself. I dodged death many a time, and that night in Abilene was no good. I was there with the intention of finding that bastard Bob, and collecting the bounty on John Wesley. I thought the Texas Rangers got heart. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they want you to believe. It was cold in a witch's tit in a brass bra that night as I fought my way past his loyal compadres. very same saloon we're sitting in today. Look around and imagine this place painted in blood. Harden was waiting for me, and... Wait, I'm jumping the gun here. Let me back up and give you some background on this some bitch. He deserves that much. Don't you think so, Ben? John Wesley Hardin was a killer. By the end, he confessed to taking the lives of 42 men. He was a bona fide folk hero by then, and had amassed a gang of armed miscreants and other assorted thugs. 
He and his men set up camp outside of town, and I was hoping Bob was among them. Shit, it's cold out here. I'm freezing my giblets off. Ain't right we gotta stay out here keeping watch like this. Ain't no bear stupid enough to go after Hardin anyway. Better three hours early than a minute too late. Wondered if Bob was among them. And I steeled myself for the fight ahead. For as good as I was, deep down I wondered if John Wesley wasn't just a little bit better. Before I could test my mettle against Harden, however, I would first need to dispatch his cadre of hired killers. Most of these degenerates were beyond redemption, but John Wesley might have been a different story. <sighs> oh. I didn't learn until later that that night was in fact his birthday celebration.
Shoot him! Shoot him! Watch where you shoot! I think I already mentioned that I found Hardin in this very saloon. I was disappointed that neither Bob nor John Wesley were among the dead. But that was short-lived, as a moment later I was facing down the fastest gun in the West. That man was faster than Grease Lightning, but being inebriated as he was, he didn't count his shots. And now, he was at my mercy. So he didn't die? No, I sent him to prison. Years later, after he was free, some restless Avenger took his life. Shot him in the back of the saloon, just like this one. Anybody up for another beer? Ben? Thank you, darling. Yeah, some say revenge is a dish best served cold. So whatever happened to that Bob guy you were after? Personally, I'd like to hear some of your other adventures. Like, uh, I don't know, did you ever go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a red man? Yes, I did, Ben. I remember once I was after this renegade Apache, Grey Wolf. Strangely enough, revenge was also his primary motivation.
A bounty was put on Grey Wolf's head, and that's how I came to hunt him in the mountains. Mountains so high they tickled the nether regions of heaven. Grey Wolf was a Chiricahua Apache medicine man who had led a war party in revenge for a massacre against his people. The U.S. Army had attacked his tribe during his daughter's sacred sunrise ceremony. And the slaughter was unspeakable. I understood his anger, as there's nothing more traumatic than seeing those you love die in a cruel and painful death. Right from the beginning, I couldn't shake the feeling that Grey Wolf was watching my every move. He led a band of young Apache warriors who wanted retribution, and were more than willing to die for him. They saw me before I saw them. And it crossed my mind that maybe this wasn't such a good idea. But now that the shooting had started, there was no backing down. It was rugged country, the winter home of the Cherokawas, and that's why they had retreated there. admit to having some regrets about going after them the way I did. But then again, I got a lot of those. Grey Wolf? Not at that moment, but I did find the entrance to their hideout. Deep crevice that led to a deeper cave, 
Don't tell me you went in there. Yeah, but it's not out of bravery so much as pure, angry cussedness. See, back then, I had a stubborn streak a mile wide, and I wasn't about to back down. So it was like pitch black in there? Actually, it was pretty well lit, as they had torches on the walls. was his cave? Big as hell, Ben. Chiricahua had hit out there during the Indian War. <laughs> They thought it was haunted with the ghosts of those murdered by the horse soldiers. The cave was haunted with dead Indian ghosts? <laughs> to be honest, I was more concerned with the live ones than the dead ones.
How come you know so much about engines? A few years back, I was married to two Mescalero women. At the same time? Yeah, they were sisters. Polygyny is traditional among the Mescalero. So what happened? Oh, I had to get out of there. Those girls never shut up. Both of them nagging at me all the time. Drove me half crazy. I haven't seen them since. No, I mean, what happened with Grey Wolf? Oh, well, I pursued him into the Cave of Death. I came upon this flooded grotto, and that's when I saw him. He came to me unarmed and unafraid. His voice echoed in the shadows, and I sensed he meant me no harm. You carry great darkness in your heart, and if you do not release it, it will claim your soul. The sound of his voice put some kind of ancient Indian spell on me. As his story unfolded in my mind. You will come to this place again, and kill many more men, and the darkness will grow until it consumes everything that you are. The soul would have no rainbow if the eye had no tears. He said I was a great warrior, a coyote man, unequaled by any other pale-faced warrior, or something like that. The snakes will bite shadows of your past until a venom poisons your heart, and an echo of the song of your dead summons the spirits deep from within the mountains. I didn't quite get what he was saying, but there was definitely snakes. where I couldn't see any way out of this trap. But suddenly, one just appeared. Kinda like a mirror. I felt like I would be lost in that damn cave forever. Finally, I found myself back outside, hurt. <clears throat> I chased after him, determined to make him explain the meaning of all that mumbo-jumbo. Mumbo Jumbo's right. Are you making this all up as you go? A few details may be fuzzy, brother, but I am relating exactly what happened to me. There were dozens of Apache warriors aiming at me from on high. <laughs> dozens? <clears throat> well, maybe not dozens, but there was a lot of them. At least three or four. Well, more than that, little lady.
I had a steep climb up creek ahead of me and scrambled up those rocks like a mountain goat. I was determined to locate Grey Wolf and find out exactly what the hell he was trying to tell me. And wouldn't you know it, that crafty son of a bitch led me right into a trap. What kind of trap? Well, son, there had to be at least a hundred Apaches around him. A hundred? God be my witness. Oh, come on. Who are you kidding? Hey, I believe you. Come on, tell us how it ended. All right, but I'm not going to drag this out. Where were we? You were surrounded by a hundred Apache warriors. Well, I didn't take the time to count them exactly, but there were a lot of them. And in the end, a path appeared before me that I had not seen before. I followed it as I desperately needed to find out what Grey Wolf was trying to tell me. But it was like that son of a bitch disappeared into thin air. Never did find him. And never did collect my goddamn bounty. <laughs>